Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Alpenglow Industries Solder Sesh. Woohoo! Um, I am super stoked because I have a whole team from Arduino here with me today. Um, I have Alessandro Ranalucci, he's the head of maker business. Anna Vigano is a manager of marketing. And Giuseppe Pinto is uh, the head of product on the Make Your Uno. And uh, we're going to be soldering up the Make Your Uno kit here and talking to them all about everything Arduino and Uno history and how this kit came to be and everything. So thank you so much for joining us and welcome. Thank you, Kerry. Thank you. <clears throat> and hello, everyone, actually. So, so pleased to, to be here in such a warm environment uh, <laughs> or to, to, to chat also, to read the comments from, from the community. Attending. Absolutely, absolutely. And I see Swara Lynx joins us. Hey, Bob, how's it going? Bob has been following us for a long time. So it's awesome to see see familiar, well, not familiar faces, familiar uh, handles in the comments. There we go. <laughs> cool. Um, well, I would I would love to learn a bit about how you all got into STEM and uh, you know ended up working for Arduino. So tell us tell us all a bit about how how you got here and what you do. Shall I start? With sure. My sure. All yeah. right. So I was about um, eight, eight years old and then I started coding. I uh, didn't like playing video games, so, so I got this new computer in my home and started to learn programming. So that's how I started understanding how to make programs with uh, that working with my boys, uh, child boys. Uh, and then fr from that moment on, I never stopped uh, learning how to make things with computers. So after many, many years, then fast forward, then I, I played with, you know, uh, while I was studying at university, I, uh, I created a startup, you know, those things, experimenting with technology and finding a purpose or a uh, turning technology into products. So then at some point I joined the 3D printing movement. Uh, and and that uh, was a life changer for me because you know that those was, were the early years when when a community of of strange people were uh, meeting online uh, from their bedrooms, uh, from their homes, garages and so on saying I'm building this machine that spits out plastic. You know, the, the world didn't know about this thing that would have changed uh, you know our story of makers. So I joined this movement uh, and then in, in order to build my own 3D printer, uh, I, I learned soldering. Uh, <laughs> and also actually I burned so many, so many boards. So I wished that someone could teach me how to solder properly without <laughs> damaging all those boards. But and, you know, you, you just dived right in and, and that's, that's great. You wanted, you had a project, you had a goal in mind, and then you were just going to learn all the skills in order to do that. So. Exactly. And, yeah. The funny thing is that at the same time, I, I learned how to solder and how to desolder. To, to... <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Desoldering is also very handy. <laughs> exactly. Oh, like Ctrl Z for, for, mistake, for soldering mistakes. <laughs> and then after that time, I started spending a lot of time in that community. So I started working on open source projects for 3D printers that later become quite known called slicer so i dedicated part of my of my life basically developing the 3d printing technology and community then fast forward many many years i was starting to organize maker fairs in europe uh, events and so on and then i had this opportunity to join arduino but, but for me it's like when your favorite band calls you on stage <laughs> and, and you say me Shall I come there, play the bass with you? <laughs> I said, yes, okay. So that, that's my story, and that's how I ended up in, in Arduino, combining a job with a, with a passion. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And what was, like, what was your educational background like before you got into 3D printing and stuff like that? Uh, that that's going to confuse the audience because I studied okay. architecture. Okay. <laughs> no, so that's one of the things, though, that I'd like to really like to point out is that so many of our guests do not have degrees in engineering or science or anything like that and yet have you know come into this amazing community and electronics related professions from some from a direction that's totally different mm -hmm. and it's more common than you might think and i'm trying to kind of remove that as a stumbling block in people's minds like oh i can't i can't do that because my background is in this other thing you know so. you know I, I often talk about this with my maker friends to understand if this has a, plays a role in uh, in the in the you know in the way one learns uh, 
And uh, of course, while a formal education, tech, a tech education has so many advantages that I'm discovering every day now that I, <laughs> that I need this, these skills. Uh, uh, at the same time, often university uh, gives you answers before you formulate the questions. Mm. Mm, yes. So it's not the maker approach where you start with a goal and you, you fail, you fail, you try, you fail, and then you end up with something, maybe, but during the journey you have learned so many things. Yeah. You know? That's what makes a maker. <laughs> yeah, that, that's an interesting way of putting it that I hadn't really thought of before, that it gives you the answers before you have the questions. And I, I absolutely can relate to that. There are so many things that I, you know, learned in college that I was just like, why am I learning this? I don't, I don't ever see why I would need to use this. And then, you know, two or three years later, once I got into my first job, I was like, oh my God, I really, <laughs> I could really use that right now. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's, yeah. Oh, that's so interesting. Cool. Um, awesome. Well, how about Anna? What's your uh, yeah, my story is slightly different, I would say. Uh, I will start from education. I'm a former lawyer, so I studied <laughs> law, but never been into any court. Uh, no, my background uh, has been for many years being into creative agencies and advertising. Mm -hmm. And it was, I think, 2012, and I came across Arduino for some interactive installations we were doing for big brands. And I started thinking uh, I wanted to, 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 to learn, of course, firstly, and then to have a job that possibly could change people's life and make them better. So fast forward 10 years, more or less, I had the opportunity to join Arduino for marketing and advertising and creative purposes. So I'm not really uh, a dual wire. I'm not into STEM in that sense, but I learned soldering with this kit. So nice. now I'm former. <laughs> I can solder now and it's very therapeutic. There's a user, uh, Cedar, saying, been soldering for many, many years and it's very therapeutic. I can say, yes, it's it's super zen activity. Same. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. And I like, I like kits for the somewhat instant project gratification where it's a very it's a very finite fixed thing you solder it up and yeah. if you've done everything right it should work <laughs> and you don't have you know it's it's nice for me when i'm in the middle of some other big project that's taking a lot of time that i don't feel like i'm making much progress on it's like oh i can just solder a little kit together that i feel good like i've done something like i've made something i've completed a project <laughs> Then I can go back to the project that I'm stuck on and have a little bit of a fresh, fresh mind for it. Yeah. Very true. <laughs> cool. How about you, Giuseppe? And uh, the, the, my story is a very, very long. I start oh, uh, with cool. my... Okay. <laughs> oh, but uh, reduction in uh, small... <laughs> no, tell us the long story. I'm terrible at doing short stories. I start so with, I understand. <laughs> with uh, my grandfather in... Um, in the age of four year. And uh, my grandfather is an R&D for television, this old, old, and, and the radio. But these, um, in four years, he speak with my grandfather and um, he's opened the home phone, the old home phone, and um, disconnect the microphone and the battery and the connection, microphone with the battery, and speak with my grandfather, why not sound? Why not ring? My grandfather, let's go, okay, start study. And uh, here I can start the um, initial the electronics part, uh, the maker and uh, study in, in university in uh, engineering electronic. And um, the Murphy's production in uh, amplifier audio in 10 years uh, and the start production in um, 20, the 100 uh, pitches for all world. The, the, the my opinion uh, and convenient in, in Arduino is a very, very passion for electronic and software. And the very, very important uh, transmission, this passion with all guys. Mm -hmm. Nice. Thank nice. you. Cool. Um, well, I should probably get started on this. Yeah, my second question is the design. Eh? It's very, very important in this design for electronic. 
for my uh, university the study for design. Yeah. This nice. is the example for in Arduino oh, select yes. yeah, the different the solder and, and, and silk with, yes. the, with all people. There, yeah, yeah. You prefer it? <laughs> Revealing secrets. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, can we? Can you? Can you hold up a little closer? One of the ones with the clear solder mask. Oh yeah. Or maybe there's even one with no solder mask. I'm not sure. But oh, those are great. Yeah. Check those out. Oh. Yeah. yeah, choosing the right color. I mean, all yeah. is always because you know factories give you those ugly blues, ugly blacks. <laughs> <laughs> There was a yeah, competition going on in the very first steps of the Arduino Make Your Own Kit because everyone had its own favorite. Like my yeah. first choice was this, and then mm -hmm. we, came, <clears throat> we came out with this, and everybody has it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all, all crash for all people Arduino, eh? Alessandro, I prefer it gold, you prefer yeah. it white. <laughs> like fighting, no, no, not fighting. <laughs> Well, yeah, it's it's so interesting because I remember like one of the first things that stood out to me when I saw my first Arduino, I was like, oh, that's a nice teal color of solder mask. Like, <laughs> they, you know, they, they're doing that custom. That's fancy. And um, and like for our for our own boards, we're always playing with solder mask, silk screen and circuit board colors to try to like get the combination that we want or just make it fun and colorful. And we're, we're not quite at the level of doing our own custom uh, silkscreen colors, but we do, we always try to seek out board fabs that have a variety of silkscreen and solder mask colors available so that we can just kind of mix and match them. So yeah, no, I totally appreciate that. And I also, uh, I also appreciate that it's kind of the um, opposite, you know, color scheme for this kit uh, than like yeah. kind of a normal, normal Arduino, how it's like mostly white with a little bit of the teal. So for this then, uh, is, it, okay, am I right in thinking that the white is solder mask and that the teal, or sorry, the white is silk screen and that the teal is solder mask? Uh, I, I think so, Giuseppe can confirm, but I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Giuseppe is the dad of this product. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just I'm curious if the am, am I am I correct in thinking that it looks to me like the teal color like the the blue green is the solder mask and the white is the silk screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. The, the teal is a solder yeah. and the white in the silk. Nice. And it's also like a really nice um it's Both a very green. nice uh like clear silk screen i'm gonna go ahead and zoom in now since i think everybody's gotten the gotten the um kit and actually i think i'll break i'll break this out do i want to break this out first mm, i might leave it in actually because then i have a little bit of extra to to hold up in my clamp here so i think i'll do it this way shove all my components aside and we'll do a little bit of zooming in here. Let's see if we can get that yeah. to focus. There we go. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the other thing that's that's pretty cool, okay. put this right side up for right now, is just how clear um, how clear and crisp the silk screen is. Because sometimes it can be kind of blobby and blurry and things like that. So I. I definitely appreciate details like that on circuit boards. <laughs> yeah, well, well, you know, we manufacture everything in, in Italy, nice. in, uh, in Piedmont. Uh, uh, so we work very carefully with the quality of materials, so with the quality of the production process. So we, uh, we, we, we reject, we discard basically everything that is not, uh, uh, that doesn't have the quality that we want. So, I mean, this is very distinct and very, very important. Also, because it helps people distinguish original products from counterfeits on one hand. Yep. And on the other hand, we think it's a, it's a matter of respecting the users because they are putting their, their, their time. They want to have fun. They, 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 they deserve something that is curated. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, the components are straight uh, <laughs> and so on. Yeah, no, absolutely. 
And we, do, we do have one circuit board where we purposefully put components at funny angles just to kind of mess with people. But <laughs> so when you're saying they deserve to have them straight, eh, sometimes they deserve to have them all crooked too. <laughs> you know, we have a team doing customer support, so they they, they receive all kind of requests for, uh, all day from help about projects uh, to to any kind of uh, of inquiry, and often they get pictures of very strange boards saying my arduino looks looks terrible why do you ship those kind of boards and and they, and they have all, all sorts of strange strange yeah. <laughs> components and we say no that's a counterfeit yeah. we, we, can, can we send you an original one because we feel sorry <laughs> <this year. laughs> oh my gosh that's so nice of you all that's that's amazing. Uh, if you flip the board, you can see that says designed in Italy and assembled by you. By you. I like, yes. A signature, exactly. It's a personal. It's a part of the experience of this make your own kit is being at the center as a, as a user. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so Devin is, com is comparing the teal of Arduino to the red of Ferrari. Just so you all know, I, I, th I think that's a good, it's, it's pretty apt. <laughs> true, true. Uh, cool. All right. So, so, so maybe we can describe the, the three parts that are in the PCB. So you're now looking at the main board, the Uno, but there are other two mm -hmm. minor pieces there. Yeah. It'd be cool to describe what we put there. Sure thing. Yeah. So there's a little debug um, circuit, and then the soldering one that is just practice, right? That's that this does not actually have functional electronics. It's just for practicing soldering, yeah. right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. I like the heart too. That's awesome. Yeah. And <laughs> the key chain after the the test uh, testing area, you can use that heart as a key chain. So yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's a good idea. I like that. Cool. And then let's see, what is, yeah, can you explain the debug a little bit? Giuseppe. The <laughs> bug for using for the, 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 the first component is the, um, the blink uh, LED mm -hmm. the experiment. For the, the, bug, the, the bug using for complete to Uno and connect for all pin and debug the blink for the LED is a correct connection. Got it. What not functional is the instruction for debug the resistor, capacitor, or, or MOSFET. Nice. So it's a nice. testing tool to make sure that all the pins work all right. It, yep. It, uh, you always need, always need to get to blinky, right? That's like the first thing you do. So there you go. Yeah. That makes Everything sense. It's famous for the blink LED, no? Uh-huh. <laughs> What is, um, so, okay, so there's, yeah, the black and the red that just plug into the pins. What is the um, pattern in the middle for? It looks like there's another connector pattern there. Oh, the, these only only design. Is a select for ah, the, okay. <laughs> for okay. For the thing I see in Arduino. <laughs> <laughs> ah, Peter says that's a nice kit. Where can I get it? <laughs> uh, you can just go on store.arduino.cc and you will find the kit. Excellent. Excellent. So on Arduino's website. And there are probably a few, are there a few distributors as well, like in different countries and stuff that are? Yes, um, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And just because we're in the US, um, I know that you all have U.S. Uh, shipping from your store, so um, yeah, we so, have a yeah. store base in U.S., so it's it's quick and fast. I would say the process. Yeah. Basically, awesome. we have our, our own e-commerce, one for the U.S. market with a U.S. Yes. warehouse shipping mm -hmm. from the U.S., the other one for the Europe market. Then we are on Amazon, and basically five Amazons. And, okay. and in addition, there is a very broad distribution network. So all, all the main resellers uh, around the world, uh, uh, distributors of electronics, um, have this kit. Cool. Excellent. You can get it everywhere is the question, is the answer to the question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, cool. And so there are also more boards that you get with this kit. And so there's one that's a speaker. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and you actually get the, the speaker component as well. 
And then there's a little synth shield too, right there. Yeah. Yeah. He, here the idea is that the pro there are basically three experiences in one product mm -hmm. because you'll learn how to solder, then you'll learn your own fully functional Arduino Uno that you can use for any kind of project. But last but not least, you also solder your first shield, which is a fully functional audio synth that nice. makes uh, you know everything uh, turns uh, can be turned into a. Um, uh, a complete project. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Now, out of curiosity, so I'm 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 looking at the components here. I have I've not actually looked at the circuit for the audio synth ahead of time. Is it is it using a five 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 timer? Is that what you one is, or what is it? How is it generating the audio? Or is the Arduino generating the audio and, and this is just kind of like tuning the, the waveforms? In this moment, using with the li a library Arduino with the mods in. Okay. But it's possible to disconnect the Arduino and using for amplifier audio with the connecting in the phone or in, in this uh, position, AUX input. Yeah. Ah, in this okay, world, cool. uh, is a very amplifier. There. Nice. So basically, you have these uh, potentiometers that are directly wired to Arduino. So uh, depending mm -hmm. on the software and library you decide to use, they can be assigned to different functions. So mm -hmm. a library will expose some uh, con controls of, of an audio synth. Mm -hmm. uh, another library might want to expose other parameters. So you can fully use this as a as a as a you know as a flexible and customizable interface. Nice, nice, very cool, awesome. So let's see what which part should I even start soldering first? I kind of typically will sometimes will start in the middle and work my way out. I will I'm just thinking about this like just out loud here. Uh, I would probably save the IC until last because it's like kind of biggest and sticks up and I don't want to have to like work around it. Um, so, uh, and in, in that case, I could just kind of start with start with resistors, I guess, start with them here. Um, oh, so one thing that I wanted to talk about, which is super cool. Um, so, gosh, I think it was like it was right around the time that the pandemic began. I was like, I was looking at um, uh, there's a, a place called Cyber City Circuits, and they have a like. Um, it's like an Arduino compatible business card where they've, you know, have like a business card sized circuit board that you can solder in at mega 328p2 and it has the basic circuitry around it. It doesn't, but it doesn't have USB. You have to, you know, do, do programming via serial. You have to have an extra little programmer externally mm -hmm. for it, but it's basically, you know, Arduino, like make, solder your own Arduino and it was all through whole components. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. Like it would be really interesting to put USB on that as some sort of like daughter carrier board sort of thing. And like, that's exactly what you all have done with this kit so that it's easy to solder. It's like, you've basically taken mm -hmm. all of the stuff that's really difficult <laughs> to solder, which is uh, the USB-C connector yeah. and the USB uh, to serial chip and a little bit of the surrounding circuitry for that and have put it all on this nice little carrier board that just has these pins that you can then just stick in right there oh, right exactly because on one hand that would have been too complex to have people solder themselves because yeah. of the size of the components but yeah. but this actually turned out uh, into an opportunity because this uh, little shield is a reusable component for any other kind of project ah, yeah I'm there you go as a USB serial uh, a module in, in mm -hmm. your own design. Yeah, cool. Yeah, um, I really, I really like that. For the ones that uh, might be buy these kits, uh, to 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 your question, where do I start? Yeah. Uh, there's a super cool 3D guide online. Uh, if you go check on our step by step. Yeah, it's a step by step 3D guide and it, it's really super immersive and super easy to follow so j just a suggestion for next uh do i wire that when i do this experience 
Yeah. If you want, if that, you want to show it, I'm sharing this. I don't know if it's easy for you to bring it to the. Yeah, to the sure screen. thing. I'm sharing it because we. This is another thing we 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 worked a bit to understand how to make nice. it easier to to no. So yeah. I, I just have my I don't have a mouse here, so it's a bit more mm -hmm. complex to orbit around the model. But you see, it's 3D, and then you follow a step by step guide, clicking next step, and it tells you take this resistor and plug it there. So you follow the instruction on the right, and then you go on to the next step. So you know the right order. And then at the same time, you can orbit around to see exactly where that component was put. Nice. That is that is seriously next level. That's really <laughs> that's really quite impressive. What um what software did you use to create that model? Uh, it's pretty custom. It's a okay. mixture of JavaScript uh, libraries. Uh, I don't know, Giuseppe, maybe you have more technical details to share. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's a custom yeah. one. Okay. With working with, uh, with the guys in, in, in Arduino, with the custom 3D particular, the, 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 the kits. And, uh, and there's a very long... Um, precious. Pre precious. <laughs> I'll bet, I'll bet. I mean, if you yeah. More, uh, yeah. It looks great, though. Like, very, very nice job on that. Yeah, because the challenge there was to find something that was animated so that it could guide you, but yeah. as, at the same time, interactive. Mm, yes. Because yeah. now you can freely, you know, this is not an animation. Yeah. It, this is me moving the, the model <laughs> right, right now. You know? Yeah, so that you can really zoom in and like get exactly. get the look that get the view that you need to understand what it is that you're seeing and and be able to compare. Exactly. Yeah. I can go back and forth and so on. So we are pretty, I mean, proud of this achievement. <laughs> you should be. It looks really great. Absolutely. That's cool. Yeah, we we felt also that uh, being probably for a lot of people the first time, first experience that they needed a super immersive experience and to be guided step by step. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there, there's a lot of effort, but we are super happy about the digital and physical experience. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, that's great. All right, well, shoot, I feel like I need to. Uh... I need to start soldering something. Might not get through this whole kit on the stream, but I'll at least uh, <laughs> at least make a good start at it. Okay. Um, we have a fully soldered one, so later we can show. If uh, we, if there you go. <laughs> there we go. Um, I don't know. I you know I actually I like to uh, to start with resistors, so I think that's where I'm going to start. And so the other thing that I noticed was that. Uh, you so at, at first like i saw this and i was like oh it's it's just some resistors on on mm -hmm. some cut tape you know no, no big deal you just you just cut however many resistors you need out of the tape and there you go um and then i noticed oh no this is like a bunch of different values of resistors <laughs> that are like hand taped together and i was like wow that is that is a lot of work <laughs> so yeah. there's definitely you know some some hand assembly labor going on in you know, in just making these kits and just kitting them up. Yeah, um, because every detail counts. So we, we have been learning about the the, uh, the, the the unboxing experience, how it's hard to distinguish a component from the other one. So every time we run a workshop, I mean, Giuseppe has run, I don't know uh, how many, tens, hundreds of workshops inside Arduino and outside Arduino with all sorts of people who don't have a soldering or technical background. And every time filming, taking pictures, and, and where, where do people get stuck? Uh, how do how we can uh, we help uh, understanding the right uh, polarity of a component? It's mm -hmm. an endless process. Yeah, absolutely. And like you know, even those of us who have done it a lot still don't pay attention and get it wrong sometimes, right? It's not <laughs> experience is no guarantee that you uh, that you won't make a mistake. So yeah, always have to pay attention to that stuff. All right. So we'll, well learn this all during uh, another time. This time we will need, we will need it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I am going to cheat and I'm going to use a multimeter to uh, to see what my resistor values are here. We okay. won't tell it. <laughs> yes. um, I am a fan of the multimeter approach. So this one is a 1K. 
And yeah. so there we go. And so the one case it, it, that those are actually pretty easily distinguishable, I think, because uh, they have a very large, there's a very large black stripe and there's the red stripe right next to it. And those are very easy for me to see. Um, one of the things that I'm always like saying with the with the resistors, especially as you know, my eyesight is getting a little bit older, I'm like 45. So <laughs> I'm, I'm losing some of that near near clarity. Um, but it can be really difficult to determine uh, like if what you're if what you're seeing is re a red stripe or is it an orange stripe or is it a black stripe or is it a brown stripe? Especially if you have, um, if, especially if you have the two per, or the one percent resistors that have uh, the blue background, the colors can be hard to see on that. So I'm, I'm curious if, uh, if you actually like sourced resistors that had like really clear stripes, or if if that was at all a consideration, or. Is the person who knows about I, I am using the, the classic color for resistor 5%. Okay. Yeah. Nice. All three different colors for the, um, the value resistor. Mm -hmm. The 1% the is a 4 and the 0.1% uh, tolerance is a 5 uh, color difference. It's a yeah. big difficult for, uh, for research the, the value. Yeah. In this yeah. case, only three color, black, brown and red 1k mm -hmm. one zero for 100. yep cool so uh, i see one question in the in the comments uh, regarding polarity oh yeah the question is whether we could use one color tape on one hand of the component and a different oh, color tape yeah. on the other hand to help distinguish the polarized ends i think we are doing this in one component uh, right, right giuseppe there is one component with a red tape on on, on one side on the side uh, but the other ones uh, can be distinguished. I mean, people should learn how to observe. To... <laughs> but for the resistor, it's not, for the resistor, it's not polarity. Right. The no, difference no, right. color is, is only for component capacitor. Mm -hmm. and the positive and the negative is a different color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And, and, and yeah, and so and we have some tantal, some exactly. uh, electrolytics here that are the, um, that have, different polarities, but it's, yeah. So it's on these, it's nice because it's pretty clearly marked the negative side. And then you also Mark have like- is, is a white for the negative and the silk in the PCB is a negative is white. Right, yeah. Yep, yep. Yeah, that makes sense. Cool. Um, and like all of the, all of the component values are nicely marked on here for the resistors, which is very, very handy. So I'm just gonna put this row in here. Let's see, I have one more, 1K. And then we have a 10K and a one mega ohm. And I'm, you know, I am being a little bit uh, persnickety here and I'm lining all of my colors up. <laughs> I don't usually do that, but I will definitely, definitely do that this time. And uh, I'm going to cheat again and use a multimeter to determine which one my 10K is and which one my, my one meg is. So this one is the 10K and it's got the orange stripe, orange stripe and um, yeah, and then like a black. But it, it is like, the, this is to, kind of to my point, you can see, you'll be able to see here once I'm, once I place it in. Um, I was just kind of, I was kind of impressed. Actually, let me put that in the, the other way around because it'll, it'll be a little bit easier to point out. But um, like the, the 1K and the 10K here look quite different in like the thickness of the of the stripes so it's it's very easy for me to tell that this is the 10k and that is the yeah, that is the 1k yeah. even though the only difference is that there's a red stripe on these and an orange stripe on the on the on the 10 so yeah. the three I, band is is only orange is a different is a red yeah 
Yeah. So that's what, like, that's why I was kind of curious. Did you like specifically <laughs> look for resistors that had like, you know, different band thicknesses and, and stuff like that, but maybe it was just a happy, happy, lucky, <laughs> lucky thing. All right. And then we have, let's see this one, which I'm guessing, yep, is our one mega ohm, which has the green stripe. There we go. And so um, the way that I generally do this is that I kind of bend the legs on the other side mm -hmm. just a little bit to hold them in place. And then um, so that way when I thread you, you completed the, the, the ultimate resistor 1K soldering the whole resistor. Mm. Sorry, what? Yeah, yeah it, mm, let's say the experience would suggest to finalize the resistors part. So and the soldering mm, the old and resistor. soldering all the resistors, but yeah. Right, yep, yep. <clears throat> um, oh, I guess there is, yeah. Okay. I guess there is one more right there. I didn't, I missed it. Okay, cool. Yeah, the one other one, Kate, got it. Got it, got it. So we'll put this one in. <laughs> See the comment from say the resistor yeah. color bender station is a personal, personal preference. <laughs> I can a bathroom t shirt all. <laughs> <laughs> totally is. Totally is. Uh, and yes, Bob, there is a uh, diode on the same tape strip as well. So as the as the resistors. Yeah. There's that one right there, which is uh, directional. Which we will get to. Awesome. Cool. So we decided to do this kit to make this kit around the, the Uno, which is the, 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 the most known product of Arduino. Many people yep. think that Arduino is Uno. Right. But, but actually, uh, nowadays, uh, Arduino has so many products in, in catalog, uh, more advanced uh, with, uh, you know, faster, faster clock, more memory with uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whatever. Still, the Uno is an iconic product that, uh, I mean, it, it's where all we started. Uh, and, and it's still a super wanted product. You know, we released that, uh, we, I mean, I, I wasn't there, but it was uh, 2010, so a long time ago, and and, and about uh, more than 10 million units of Uno uh, were sold as of last year when we decided wow. to make another product, which was uh, also designed by Giuseppe, uh, which was a, a limited edition of a miniaturized oh. version of the Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. The, I saw that. It was totally adorable. And yeah, there were so many people uh, on my feed who were just, uh, <laughs> yeah, who were just going crazy over it. Very, very cool. And, and, and when we launched that, um, that celebration product, we, we uh, found a very old article from Make Magazine uh, after the Uno was launched. Uh, like 12 years ago, uh, saying, uh, oh, the Uno has crossed the 10,000 uh, sales <laughs> threshold, so yeah. it's going to stay. <laughs> nice. That's amazing. Very true, true. So I'm, I'm curious, like, I mean, obviously you have a lot of statistics and things from your current Uno sales about the popularity of the product and... Um, oh, Got one more like to solder and um and so you can probably like make some projections from that but like for a totally new product like this and one that's quite different because you have to actually solder it yourself like how do you determine how many you're going to build it first and and like how much to you know how much to commit to that um and like part of it part of the reason i'm asking it's, it's very different but you know there are a lot of small maker friends that I have who, you know, ha produce one, you know, one thing or a series of boards and, and even us ourselves when we're doing something new, you know, it's always, we always have this question. It's like, okay, how many are we going to make for that first run? So I'm curious how, how you all go about kind of 
figuring that out and answering that because it seems like the stakes are so much bigger, right? <laughs> that, that question is really spot on. <laughs> and that's exactly what we are asking ourselves all the time. So. <laughs> Long conversations in the office. Yeah. So it's, it's no easier, yeah. basically. There's, there's no. Yeah. <laughs> there's Every no new product uh, is, is a different story. Is a different story. So on one hand, we, you know, we, we try to cross the the, the the track record of similar products we have. So kits, uh, uh, and uh, at the same time, we talk to to many people around the world. So all the resellers, distributors. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, also journalists. I mean, everyone who could have some insight on what the market is, is asking and so on. So it also depends on the time in the year when you launch it. Yeah. You know, Christmas is a, is a different is a, is a story and so on and so on. So so we try to balance our forecast with uh, with the with the problem that uh, <laughs> well, you know this well. You, you need to order things in advance if you if you want to. Yep. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, totally. To make something happen. Also, especially these times. So. Yeah. When when suppliers to tell you, okay, right, this order is gonna be shipped to you in six months from now, eight months from now, <laughs> and you say, okay, <laughs> where is my crystal ball? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. This particular project, uh, something that makes us very eager to tell this story is that, of course, we we did a mix and match of testing the temperature with our resellers testing and looking at some conversations going on in the world, but uh, we precisely remember some comments when we released the Arduino Uno Mini limited edition, some comments of people in the community saying, oh, it would be super cool and great if you do, if you do the Arduino Uno very first edition back to 2005, and this is what we did because this is very similar to the very, very first Arduino Uno. So one of the, let's say, one of the ingredients of the recipe is also to listen to the community. And you see, sometimes dreams come true. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> right? Yeah, I was going to ask about that, actually. Um, if the, because, I mean, I've definitely seen, I've seen some old Unos that looked like they were entirely through holes. And so... What what is the history of the Uno? Did it actually was the very first one a completely through hole, do it yourself kit, or was it just through hole but pre assembled, or what was the yeah what was the progression there? So as far as I know, Uno has never been sold in in a kit form. No, so it's it's always aesthetic, yeah, as as a fine as a finished product. Then of course the first versions because there there have been multiple versions of it. Mm -hmm. Of course, they had the bigger components through hole, so they had this, uh, uh, you know, th this look that you were referring to. Yeah. Mm. But yep. of course, but okay, when, when it comes to forecasting amounts, there is also another thing that it it it, yeah. it, it happened multiple times that uh, at last minute we increased quantities because we we said okay, lots of people are requesting this. I mean, I shouldn't probably. probably I Alex, shouldn't. Excuse me for for discussion with carrier with um, carrier in the yeah. the lead is polarized. Pin is a long pin is yes. um, and the positive. Yes, so that was that was something I was gonna yeah I was gonna mention when I when I got the very, very so, <laughs> Yes, so <laughs> L, yeah, LEDs polarity is important and they're they're easy to damage if you have to unsolder them and and resolder them and so it's it's worth a little extra time to get it right the first time and I am notoriously bad at talking and getting polarity correct at the same time. So, <laughs> so yeah, no, I realized that. Um, so there's several things to look for, right? Like, so on the board, the, um, the positive one is marked, the positive end is marked, which is nice. And also you do have the little um, LED symbol, the diode symbol inside the pattern here, inside the, like, the little footprint. So it, the, for LEDs, it always points to the negative. So that's another another way that you can can figure that out. And then there are two clues on the actual part itself. Um, when you have nice fresh LEDs that haven't already been clipped, <laughs> uh, there's a long there's a long uh, pin and a short pin that you can see there. And the long pin is always positive, and the positive. short pin is always okay. negative. Easy. Yeah. 
And then it's really hard to see on these, uh, on the three millimeter ones. It's a little easier on the five, but it still can be hard to see. A lot of times the um, this lens will have a flat side, mm -hmm. and yeah. then the flat side is the negative. So and this is a flat, but it's a very, very small. It's, right? it's really small. It's it's hard to see without a microscope. But the fish experience you for the bug, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> connect in, in the bug and not commit error in, in, in the Uno. <laughs> nice. So Jason is saying that finally uh, there's some motivation to assemble the maker that <laughs> he got. So very happy. Yes, excellent. Hello, Jason. Happy How's it going? One. So, yeah, I am going to... For LEDs, I, I will bend the legs out a little bit, but I'll do it like really gently because um, again, LEDs are just a little more delicate, and um, and you know it is it is possible to damage them by being too aggressive when you bend the legs. Um, so let's see, I'm just going to kind of hold hold these in while I flip them upside down, and I don't know, I kind of prefer to to bend them forward and back in order to stick them in sometimes. Um, although these I'm going to kind of just gently bend this way. And then while I'm soldering them, I'll, I'm also going to um, see about holding the lens from the, un from the other side so that, mm -hmm. uh, so that it's as flat as possible to the circuit board. Okay. So we'll do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then for the LEDs, I am actually going to use some flux because flux just makes soldering a little bit easier. And I like using flux pens. Um, this one right here that I'm using is one that we use a lot for through hole stuff. Um, it's a Chemtronics lead-free flux dispensing pen, the, the lead-free just, it, it, I mean, there's not lead in flux. <laughs> the lead-free just means it's for lead-free solder. So it like holds up a little bit better to the extra heat, like at the, to the higher temperatures required, but it's just, it's like a no clean flux. Cool. So, so that's awesome. So kind flux of- Flux is uh, very important for S SMD component. Huh? Yes, yes, absolutely. So I'm going to solder one leg there a little bit. And then I'm just going to kind of reflow this. And while I'm pushing from the other side, just to kind of make sure that it's flat. And then flow it from that side. That's not a super pretty joint. There we go. That's a little nicer. And then I'll do the same thing where I'm just going to solder one side of it and then from the bottom, just push up on the LED lens a little bit. And then I, I just felt it kind of, you know, push up and seat against the circuit board. And then I'll solder the other leg. And these ones I'm going to kind of clip as I go because the legs are a little bit in the way. Um, so that's, that's cool that like, that basically, uh, the people, the people wanted the Uno, the, the DIY Uno. And so you're like, okay, well, let's, let's do it. <laughs> and I think that that one, let's see. So Peter is asking if there is any promo code oh. for viewers. <laughs> Actually, but I, I can, I mean. If you agree, Carrie, we can give you one sure. afterwards. So maybe tomorrow we can just give you some. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So um, basically follow us on Mastodon and Instagram and um, and we'll, we'll promote that. And we can also, if it's like a limited time thing, we can yeah. also put it in okay. the description. Okay. Yeah, we yeah. can also put it in the video description too um, after, after we're all done. Cool. Awesome. Thank you for doing that. It's very no nice. Um, so, are there going? Do you think that you're going to do any other solder it yourself Arduino kits? Maybe. <laughs> how how is the reception going so far for this one? 
I designed a different product, but uh, it's a very secret, for my opinion. Uh, we are cooking something. <laughs> the responsibility for all Alessandro. Yeah. There's something in the, in the bakery area, but... <laughs> nice! Some yeah. secret bacon in the Arduino oven. I like it. Yeah, maybe, that, that, maybe. stay that's tuned. Lot. That is a lot. We work in advance also, you know, for the in order to arrange uh, the... the all the supply chain needed to uh, for this amount so so yeah. we are now going to release it's going to be a very a very busy spring for, <laughs> for arduino because we have a, a number uh, i mean it, it, for, for true uh, anna knows what i'm referring to we yeah. have a, a quite a bunch of very important things that arduino is going to release in the next uh, months oh exciting yeah. did you did you kind of have to slow down and not do as much as you wanted to while the because of the whole chip shortage, how did how did that affect you all? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, th these years have been very strange. So on one hand, you 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 try to adapt your designs to what you can easily source on the market. Yeah, you basically cook with what you have in the fridge. Uh, on, on the other hand, there are some very important things that you don't want to to remove from your designs. So we decided to postpone the launch of some products until mm -hmm. we could secure the right amount of pieces. Yeah, and this is now happening so in in, in in february march and april there will be very important things uh, that we will announce and a little a, a little leak uh stay tuned on tuesday because something could happen Ooh, awesome and wh where should where should people be following you for this to hear about this announcement Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, newsletter? YouTube. Do you, get, do you have a newsletter as well? We have a newsletter. Of course, you can go on our website and subscribe to our, to our newsletter. Also, when you are subscribed, sometimes we give some news in advance or some premieres of products. So, yeah. So, nice. see you on Tuesday, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. Oh, that's exciting. I will definitely, uh, definitely have to check check out the website and everything on Tuesday. Okay. Also, on those channels, there are uh, regular links uh, to our blog, and our blog is, uh, is a very is a very nice place where every day we publish. Yeah. Uh, I mean, um, I'm biased, but of course, it's it's very nice content uh, because we pick all the good projects from the Arduino community, and so some of them are really, really. Uh, really good so i mean cool. the, you know probably something to watch out for and also i think we could uh, mention the arduino day which is upcoming oh yeah sure that's right yeah when is when is arduino day Ardu <laughs> um i wonder if oh hang on a second i'm just gonna do this uh oh what happened we, I, I, our internet just blipped for a second, which is odd because we're wired in with a fiber optic account. But I'm wondering if the road to work outside is, uh, <laughs> Murphy's Low. Yeah. I'm just going to do that. There we go. Okay. So, are we actually still broadcasting? Yes. Okay. Cool. So it did not. And happen. the broadcast, I don't think. Oh, no, this is not. Okay. Alessandro is good. I'm good. <laughs> ah, of course. All right, cool. So we're going to add everybody back. Still broadcasting. Sorry. We're all good. No, that's okay. I think it was, uh, I think it's on our side because um, I, I'm guessing that the road work is not being kind to our internet today. Um, we are all, we are all hardwired in. So it's definitely not a, um, not a Wi Fi issue. So. Whew. All right. <laughs> We're back. <laughs> so um, 
let me see. What what were we? Where were we? Uh, we were talking about Arduino Day. So oh, yes, uh, Arduino Day. Thank you. On Saturday, March the twenty fifth, and March 25th. we will be, be releasing the program very soon. In I would say a couple of weeks, three weeks, and of course, as every year, we are very happy to host some projects, some hack hackathon or competition. So we will let you know what's happening this year. Nice. The nice. celebration of Arduino birthday, by the way, which was in March. Uh -huh. And uh, I, I would, I would uh, recommend anyone to Google for Arduino cake. You will find tens of cakes in the shape of an Arduino. The, the community. Nice. <laughs> I I feel like uh, like the local donut shops should get down with Arduino Day and do like <laughs> teal glazed donuts in celebration because that would be pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> So on, on these guys, it looks like we have an IC and uh, maybe some transistors as well here. Okay, one uh, one um, is LDO for connecting U1. Mm -hmm. And the, um, the true is a MOSFET with the, the top uh, white. With the okay, so this guy is the MOSFET. The MOSFET. So that in will go two, right there two, in one. U1. Correct. And I'll just put that right there for now. And then, um, cool. This so then both LDO. of these are the same and they're the LDO. Yeah, for for, um, for the spare component. Awesome. Too, but using uh, only one. Nice. Yeah, I've, I've noticed that there are a few like LED and resistor spares so far, which is nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And of course, uh, direction does matter on these as well. So if you look at the top, it's like, in the shape of yeah, a little is a polarized and and then the solder yep and, and then you line yeah line it up with the flat edge on the solder mask and you do have to bend the leads out just a little bit um that's that's pretty normal if um the reason for that is that if you make the solder pattern um so that these go in straight it makes the um the individual solder pads very, very close to each other and easy to bridge. So it's nice to actually have them spaced out a little bit, even though that means that you have to just like bend, bend the legs just a little bit. Um, I've also seen other kits that kind of stagger the legs a little bit to kind of avoid, avoid them being too close to each other. So there we go. Okay, correct. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. So interesting stuff coming up on Arduino Day. Um, what uh, what else do you what else have you released um, recently? I mean, we're we're all the way at the, like the simple eight bit end here, right? With the Arduino Uno, which I love. I I really have a have a place in my heart for eight bit processors because I think that they are very, um, they are not intimidating and they are easier to understand. If you want to get to the point where you actually are looking at the data sheet of the processor and looking at how all the registers work and things like that, it's it's not as daunting as something like an M0, which is, you know, many, many times more complicated and has just a lot more going on just to even set it up properly. So, um, so I really like I love the Ardu I, I love the Arduino Uno also as like a jumping off point to digging into you know more embedded programming if people want to do that. And I'm biased. I mean, I got into embedded programming with the Arduino Uno, so you know, <laughs> so I think it's great. <laughs> I took um, I had some C programming in school, but. Uh, I never really, never really did much with it. Um, and I was really doing electronics hardware for um, most of my professional career. And somebody else was always writing the software for it. Uh, so there came a point in time when I wanted to do a project. I wanted to build a machine. <laughs> and I was like, well, I totally understand how to um, you know, do the circuit board for this and how to connect everything. But, um, 
but I don't, you know, I've never written any software before for, for a device. So I asked a friend of mine, um, is actually uh, Mark Smith, he goes by Smitty Halibut online. And uh, I was like, hey, what should I, you know, what should I do to get into programming and stuff? And he was like, oh, you should get an Arduino. And so, yeah, that's how I, that's how I got into it. And then it was just, you know, all over from there. <laughs> totally hooked. <laughs> Totally hooked. And, and that's the same approach we, we try to put also on, um, you know, higher end uh, products because, you know, Arduino Uno and the starter kit and the Make Your Uno kit, they, of course, are for people who are beginners and they're trying to understand the basics of electronics, uh, soldering and uh, hardware and so on and programming as well. And yeah. then, of course, so there are the next steps in the journey, which are the more advanced ports where people start to learn about connectivity when people start using uh, more sophisticated uh, peripherals of the boards and so on. Um, but we, we keep trying to, you, to, to use the same approach of uh, uh, simplifying things that don't need to be that complex uh, as, mm -hmm. as they were originally designed. So the Arduino approach is about uh, basically bringing everyone to a clear, practical, easy, friendly knowledge of things. Yeah, and I have to say that um, the... The one thing that I continue to really, really appreciate about Arduino is how simple you have made the tool chain. <laughs> and like, you know, be beginners might not under might not understand exactly what I'm talking about here, but um, basically what I'm what I'm talking about is that it is super easy to just connect a board and program it. And if you if all you've known is Arduino, then you might kind of take that for granted because that seems to be how it should be in life. You should just be able to connect a processor up to a computer and program it no problem. And uh, in real life, that is actually very, very difficult. It relies on a ton of different bits of software working together, you know, many of which are like different open source pieces that are always changing and moving. And um, making that whole thing stable. Oh, and it can also involve external hardware as well. And so like making that whole thing stable and pretty much invisible to the user so that you can just click a button and program your processor the first time, that, that's just kind of amazing. And I just want to give credit where credit is due on that. <laughs> it's, Let's give credit it, to the team that there are a team, this is, there is a team dedicated to all the open source tools. Uh, and they yeah. have released uh, last year the, the, the version two of the IDE because we rewrote from scratch the entire. Yeah, IDE. it's been a, a very, a very complex work. Also, also very, I mean, we invested a lot also from a financial point of view. And Arduino is not a, a, a billion dollar company. Yeah, Arduino is a company that uh, runs thanks to people oh. buying original Arduinos, thanks to, 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 to all the community supporting and so on. We have donations, we have uh, uh, the online cloud services, which which is also a way to get services, but also a way to, to give back to to give back and support the project. Uh, yeah. and, and basically, we have been releasing uh, tools, uh, also command line tools, uh, uh, scripts for GitHub uh, that more advanced users uh, can use to test continuously their projects. Uh, there are so many things. And last week we released uh, our yearly open source report, uh, mm. where we do a retrospective of everything happened in the previous 12 months on the open source side, either made by the Arduino team or by the community. So who are the most active library maintainers and so on? Yeah. It's, it's a way to give credit to, to the whole community. In addition That's awesome. To doing this, right? That's awesome. Oh, there's, there's much Uno love in the comments. This is, this is awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah, Devin's workshop says that they wouldn't be here if it wasn't for falling in love with, with their first Uno. <laughs> and that, yeah, learned C++ because of Arduino and then Python, and now they know five, nine different languages. So, yeah. <laughs> and Peter says soldering your own RS-232 or 422 was horrible back in the days. Yeah. <laughs> And yep, and more more love for the programming tool chain as well, that it uh, supports so many chips and boards and make, makes it easy to adapt. Definitely. Yeah, that's the that's the other nice thing. If you, it, you <clears throat> don't have all of this um, irrevocably, irre like time that's been irrevocably invested in a project, if you decide that you need to upgrade to a different board, um, when you're using Arduinos, you can just upgrade to another board. And a, a lot of times, like most of your code will, will just continue to work. You, 
you don't necessarily have to rewrite a lot of it. I mean, there, you know, there are some processors that have sort of specialty things, right, of course, but, um, but yeah, in general, you don't have to rewrite your, you know, digital IO pins high, pins low, and things like that. So that's really, really nice. <coughs> yeah, exactly. And there is a lot to do on the tooling if you want to bring it to a, to a state where where anyone can use it uh, as if it was, a, I mean, a commercial product. Often we know that open source tools are some, somehow are incomplete. They lack documentation or the they they work only sometimes. Uh, but we 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 really work on on the Arduino tooling uh, as a as a as product basically even though they are open source free anyone can modify use them also for commercial purposes and so on just yeah. to name one one stream of, uh, that we are working on which is probably less visible but super important uh, how to make the arduino tools accessible um, mm -hmm. because yeah. you know when, when you when you have such a large community you have people who have special needs uh, when, when you have students schools and so on uh, you need to 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 take care of the color scheme of the of the uh, keyboard shortcuts uh, uh, to do research with uh, with special categories of users. Uh, I mean that's a hidden work uh, that is really important, and we and we, yeah. and we keep investing in, in in all these parallel streams. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> oh, Xwax says that that yeah, they started on the Uno and the Adafruit Gemma. And uh, thanks for making microcontrollers accessible to everybody. <laughs> cool. Thank you for spreading the passion, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm noticing, and again, I don't, I don't have the cool 3D instructions right, right in front of me, but I will definitely, definitely look at those. Um, so I have three ceramic, little yellow ceramic capacitors here. Mm -hmm. And then I have these guys, which look like uh, capacitors as well. And yeah, this is, is a capacitor 100 nanofarad. Aha. So those are the 100s. And no, right, yes. what kind and of capacitors the, 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 are, are these? Do, are, these are not ceramics, are they? Or it's, it's just an interesting. No, no, it's, it's not, not ceramical, but. Um... I'm sorry, but I don't remember. <laughs> I know I'm trying. I, like I, I... <sighs> the ceramical is is a, a small capacitor yellow. Yeah, yeah. And this is a, a polyester. Okay, polyester. That's right. Okay, cool. Interesting. Um, cool. And so um, these ones, it doesn't look like they're labeled, but it does look like there are two to one picofarad. Yeah. Picofarad. Okay. And I'm just curious. I get these out of the out of the tape here. There we go. Just pulling those guys off. Oh, I preferred you soldering these um, the first um, twenty two picofarad, the small first. yellow capacitor. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I, I, but I have is correctly for soldering is a, a small and height component for all PCB. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I just without the I don't have the instructions in front of me, so I'm not sure which where these go. Um, I'm guessing C4 and C5 because they're close to the crystal. Yeah, is that right? Okay, perfectly. And then there's one X, then this one is an extra one. Yes. Oh, this is or soldering in, in the first PCB in the in the soldering PCB. Oh, in the soldering PCB. Got yeah. it. Got it. Got it. Yes. Because we went we went straight, we went straight to the uh, to the real PCB. <laughs> cool. Okay. No, no need to say all this is open source hardware. So, ah, um, yes. Uh, on the yeah. website, uh, there is the not only the full schematics, but also the, the real uh, CAD files uh, that exactly. anyone can use to manufacture the entire product. Nice. Um, what, uh, what circuit board software do you all use to do your layouts? Altium. Altium. Ah. Yes, I, I... With Altium is a partnership with uh, Arduino, mm -hmm. is, uh, is a brand. 
Um, now we, we also put an interactive view viewer provided by Altium. So if mm -hmm. people go on docs.arduino.cc in the, the product page, they, they will see an interactive viewer that lets you manipulate the PCB, click on components, see the bill of materials, so get the codes of each component. They are all ah, interesting. Now, does Altium have any kind of lower? I, I know that they've come out with newer products. I used to use Altium a lot um, professionally. Uh, but we used like their big professional seat, which is many thousands of dollars per year just to upkeep. But I know that they have some other products out now that are maybe, I, I think they, do they have a free, an actual free circuit board version? Like that is more maker friendly? Oh, for, for free is um, a student yeah. um, collaboration and the limited for the pad and the pin uh, using in the PCB, 100 or 200 pad using for free. Mm -hmm. uh, Altium is a very, very professional uh, yeah. tooling for, um, for hardware team and R&D and the production. I send the file in, in, the, in the machine and the pick and place, uh, component library is a very very yeah interesting interesting um yeah i i recently made well recently within that then within the past couple of years made the switch myself from altium to kicad because um you know i just for for the stuff that we're doing and trying to um make things a little bit more accessible and open source it was just it's definitely you know, all team is just definitely cost prohibitive. The, the um, funds uh, card for the PCB and then and, and the general is a key card. Yeah, yeah. These are open source yeah. and uh, all people guys are using the, the card. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but I'm assuming you also have um, Gerber's of this board up online maybe for... Yeah. For people to, if they wanted to, like have one made themselves and do the, the make your own, make your own Uno. <laughs> um, so one thing that I noticed, and I'm I'm wondering how this has been um, received, is like um, the make your own Uno kit is actually more expensive than just buying an already done Uno. And so, like, I understand that uh, yeah, a lot of work goes into kitting components, and there's actually, there tends to be more labor involved in kits than there is in something that is just assembled by machines, right? Because um, still a human kind of has to bag all of those components and things like that. So I, I, I understand where that cost comes from, but I'm curious if you've gotten any any questions about that of like, why is this kit so expensive and, and, or like more expensive than just buying an Uno and like what you, what you say to people who are asking those questions? Well, it, it's a, it's a good question because I mean, pricing is, is an important thing. Sorry, Ale, 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 sorry for, yeah. I, I prefer to connect the Diodo oh. D1. Oh, as well as steam resistor. Okay, <laughs> I got it. Oh, step that's step. okay. I'll, I'll Sorry, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Emergency. <laughs> no, don't do that yet. <laughs> hey, teacher, it's okay. <laughs> Red button on the table, man. <laughs> right? The buzzer. And right. so, of course, you know, diodes are directional, so we're just going to make this sure. This component is a polarized with the band uh, white. Yep. Yeah, correct. Yep. So we have the... Uh, the white band on the board and also the diode symbol in the middle there so that we can put it in correctly, lining it up with the silver band on the actual diode. Like that. Okay, okay. Adam, come on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, back to pricing. <laughs> uh, now back to the pricing question. Uh, in, in this particular case, uh, uh, actually, the reaction we, we, we are having is that, oh, well, people expect it to cost more. Uh, okay. we, uh, it's interesting because, you know, uh, not always the, the perceived uh, cost of something is based on the actual bill of materials, uh, but yeah. it's based on the, on the value of the whole experience. Uh, so in this case, uh, you, 
you know, there is also the 3D documentation where people see that they understand yeah. that a lot of work went there. And it, that's true, actually. We, we invested a lot of work uh, yeah. and uh, a team of multiple people working on, on just that part uh, and in addition to everything else. So in well, this particular I'm case, kind of glad say, that you're saying that that was a lot of work because uh, it, if it was like, oh, yeah, it was just that easy and there was this program, I mean, that would be cool, but then we'd also have to try to do that. And <laughs> so <laughs> we'll, we'll be good with our own kits with just photos for now, step-by-step <laughs> -step photos. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. So what happens is with the products that people are saying, oh, I thought it would cost more than, than what is, is priced. Uh, then, of course, uh, with other Arduino boards, uh, some people say, you know, they, they, they expect them to cost less. Uh, but then, of course... Uh, but I prefer do you soldering the socket to Optimega. This one first, yeah. yeah. Why, why, why is, why is that? Is, is a high respect in, the, in the socket, yeah. Uh, okay, interesting, interesting. <laughs> I'll, I'll... You not see the three D step by step, huh? <laughs> so in my soul, you yeah. know that <laughs> <of them. laughs> What are you teaching the younger generations here? <laughs> Read the manual. And there is like there is a little um, a little U notch in the top in the top here. Of course, it's this is just a socket, so it like directionality doesn't like really, really matter. But um, it is nice to, you know, um, to still have that indication of where pin one should go, right? Because theoretically, you could put the chip in this way or that way. And you definitely don't want to put it in backwards. So um, this little U up here denotes uh, the pin one side of things and lines up with the little U on the yeah. silk screen. Oh, and there's something that we haven't mentioned about this kit, which is the packaging. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, please, please tell us more about the packaging because I noticed that a lot of it comes in... Um, in little um, paper bags, which I think is pretty cool from a recyc you know, recyclability standpoint and environmental impact standpoint. And you know, we've we've thought about doing trying to do a little bit more paper packaging with our own kits now and then. So I'm I'm curious as to how how that's going. Well, yeah, on one hand, there is an environmental effort that we are being doing on all the products. So we are removing uh, gradually all the foam and plastic inside the, um, the the boards that we are replacing them with pure cardboard uh, with a with a clever design that just like designed uh, yeah. but in this case there is there is more i don't know if yeah. is that what you want to it oh yeah tell us more after you unbox this uh, the packaging has, the, has this interesting shape yeah which basically becomes the enclosure of your oh. of your finished audio synth so yeah. you use everything including the the packaging nice nice that's super cool yes i did i did notice that we have right there yeah. goes the speaker then uh the pots and then the and pots then to my the space, space. Edit yourself nice that's cool uh, that's that's the goal cool. is a, is a, is a, a small but is very important the eco-friendly story yeah. story mm -hmm. And not print book. This is this is a, the first kit is a not print book, but the three D is uh, convenient. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I the, and that's always a hard. It's always a hard decision, but like I think that I don't know. I I think these days it makes more sense to send people to a website for instructions because you know almost everybody has phones and and. Um, internet access is pretty, pretty good in most places that also has, you know, enough electricity to have a soldering iron and stuff like that. So, um, and it allows you to make updates to the instructions too, as you get feedback from people without exactly. having a whole bunch of print already done. Yeah. No, I'd like to get some comments from, from our audience about this, this topic, because we always struggle with this decision because yeah. on one hand, the paper book is, is a, I mean, creates a different experience. Uh, we, we, we all like it when you, when you see one book in one kit. Then we go to our warehouse and we see 
uh, hundreds of thousands of kits being shipped and we see a lot of paper going, going there and we really feel sorry about that yeah so yeah so so yeah give give them some give them some feedback do you like the uh do you think that a having like a little bit of an instruction right with the kit is like integral to the experience or are you totally cool just being directed to a website in order to do it yeah we we tend to use qr codes with all of our little kits and just just as an easy way to get to the right right page all right Ah, has anybody come up with a good way to protect dip pins without foam? That is a good question. Yeah, so, it, it, for, for SD connection in, yeah. in the microcontroller is the very big board, uh, the big problem with um, not functional and the short to the pin internal. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, I think the answer, Devin, to that. You prefer the small form, but not rechange uh, microcontroller with the, the people. Yeah, yeah, and and the microcontroller is the only yeah. thing that was this in the bag, this, this is a bag as yeah. SD, the protection. Yep. The yep. Yeah. So yeah, Devin, still still need plastic for ESD protection and foam for for dip pins. Um, I have seen people like put dip pins through cardboard before, but like, well, it's not ESD safe. And, um, I, I have still seen pins damaged from that. So, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so before before I do another thing in the wrong order, what would yeah. you suggest next? <laughs> the, the electronic the capacitor, the C six and the C seven. Okay, got that, got it, and I got those. The capacitor is a polarizer. There we go. Yes, these are the yeah electrolytic capacitors. Cool. Um. Right, so we have C6 and C7. And so these are also uh, sensitive to polarity. So we have the negative marked on them. Negative, and, black, yes. Yeah. And the long pin is positive with the same with the letter. Yep. yep, exactly. Same with the LEDs. So LEDs. putting that in there. And this one in here. So Peter is saying, yeah. make paper optional at ordering. Oh, that's, that's hard to do because then you have to stock two different configurations and then your distributors have to have two different configurations. Yeah, yeah. I, I understand the, the desire there. Implementation is difficult though. All right. I'm going to do the same kind of thing here where I just solder in one of these legs. And then um, from the underside, I'm just going to kind of push up a little bit while I reflow that leg just to make sure that it's like flat and seated nicely. And then solder the other leg. There we go. I'm going to clip that one so that it's out of the way too. And then do the same thing with this. Cool. So let's see. Uh, DigiKey ships dips in a long plastic. Oh, the slide container. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that those are, yeah, those are tubes and, um, those are also useful because they can be, um, fed directly into automatic placing machines. Um, usually they have like a little, they're, they're hooked up, they're like at an angle and they have like a little, um, 
vibration going to them so that the the chips slide down to the opening and then uh, and then they get picked up by the machine and can be can be pick and placed if you know if you have like through hole pick and place going on. Um, but the, or even the, a lot of service mount is mounted. very very different for Arduino. Eh? DJK yeah. is keeping the one billion component in in the <laughs> yeah and the logistic is a very very difficult yep it's a big difference <laughs> okay now can i do the blue capacitors i prefer the uh, the usb <laughs> usb first all right <laughs> that's funny i would definitely have done the capacitors before before the usb but that's okay and it, this is nice too because there's only one way that you can put this one in um, because there are a different number of pins on one side than the other. So it, you can't make the mistake of putting it in that way, right? And I mean, of course, you want the connector pointing out, but no, you know, yeah, not, not as, possible. Yeah. The rotate with uh, not one pin. <laughs> so let's see, I'm going to do this. that and I'm just gonna do this um, you know obviously we can't like um, obviously we can't uh, bend these le these leads so what I tend to do um, with things like this and I'm I'm also using this little um, circuit board holder vice this is like a little Hako vice so it kind of holds the board in midair um, you can, of course, do this like flat on on the yeah, table. Yeah. I prefer the soldering with the, the, the component in the tape board. Mm -hmm. and, and that way you don't have to kind of hold it from the bottom and, and do this, do stuff like, like I'm doing right now, which is like temporarily kind of tacking pins on either side. These are not very good solder joints because uh, I'm just like blobbing solder from the iron um and not straight from the wick or straight from the um straight from the spool but what it does is it is it holds it good enough <laughs> for right now and oh boy spam everything i know straight. right today today but um yeah so so this is how i do it so these these two bad solder joints just kind of like they hold it for right now and then what that allows me to do is to go and solder all of the yeah. actual pins nicely and um, then when i get to the bottom i just like add like a tiny bit of solder and reflow this joint and then it's then it's all good so there are definitely like different ways different ways you can do this And I'm going to reflow that one and then do my ground pin last. And ground pins, it's totally normal for them to take like a little bit more heat and a little bit more time in order to flow well um, because they're connected. They tend to be connected to more copper eventually. So the connected copper just wicks away the heat a little bit more. So you just have to spend a little bit more time with the iron on those pins. And it's not, it's not anything you're doing wrong that's normal for ground pins. That's, but that's something that like I notice, um, I notice people who are just starting out worry about. Is a preferred to cut the pins to the USB connector? Eh? Um, oh, you want you want to actually cut those? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I can see that because they do. Yeah, they do stick up a little bit, so we could do that. And you always want to cover the pins that you're cutting with the fingers so that they don't flick across the room and into somebody else's eye <laughs> or into your own eye. <laughs> uh, cool. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Devin, for reporting that. Yeah, Robin was pretty quick on also getting those spam comments out of there. Electronic porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Soldering, soldering is what we do here. Okay, good. 
<laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> All right. So now I'm looking at the different components and how tall what they are. What do you want to do a decision you are? Is uh, for me a I can do I can do whatever order I want. <laughs> I suggest with the push the push button with the reset pin. Okay. I will take suggestions. So the, the cool thing about these little push buttons is that they have um, little bent legs. So when you push them through the board, they kind of snap in and they um, they hold themselves into the board essentially. So you don't have to to worry about it. Although this one this one's a little loose, so so I think I will have to hold it in just a little bit. But that's okay. It's hard to hard to get that consistently a lot of times. Cool. Um, yeah. So, is there, are there any other projects that uh, that Arduino is doing right now, other than the um, other than the Arduino Day upcoming stuff and something new and exciting and secret on Tuesday? Is there anything else that uh, you want people to know about? <laughs> so we we keep releasing updates to the existing products. So lately, we have been releasing uh, new revisions of. Uh, other products like the Maker IoT Carrier, which is a round PCB, um, oh, I don't have it with me, uh, uh, which has um, a color screen, a, a color round display with five touch buttons around it uh, and, and a number of things like a battery holder, an IMU, so you can use it to, to build uh, handheld video games as well as IoT devices. Uh, like you know a thermostat uh, controller or something like that so we released a new version which also has a, um, a sensor which measures air quality uh, uh, and other goodies there so it, it's got relays so you can control up to 24 volts oh nice and so on <laughs> all right I'm not not getting told I can't put the blue caps in right now <laughs> No speak. <laughs> okay, start with caps. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> well, according to the height thing, I probably should have done the um, the IC and the transistor later too. But if we were doing it in terms of height of components, but but that is okay. So we got one, two, three, four, and five. And like when you're pulling the the tape off of these and stuff, you don't have to worry about um, getting them super clean because you're just gonna cut off that part anyway. Yeah. So just put them in like that. Awesome. And I'm going to bend them just a little bit to keep them in. I flip it over. All right. Oh, we got one more too. Hang on. Aha. C8 at the very bottom. There. Yeah, I also, I know a lot of, <laughs> a lot of friends, we, we, we definitely, um, I think the more used to soldering you are, the less likely you are to, <laughs> the more likely you are to just dive in without reading the instructions. Let's put it that way. <laughs> like I've soldered a ton of things. I can do this. No problem. <laughs> Oh, we, we are close. That's my yeah. Oh, yeah. Components are missing there. Yeah, no, we're definitely very close. So <laughs> now is the um, is the processor already programmed with Blinky on it? Or is it is it um, completely uh, 
Is it completely blank or does it just have the bootloader on it? Uh, I, I, thi I think they are pre-programmed uh, with the Blink nowadays. Blink? It really cool. depends a bit on the batches, but I think uh, it's pre-programmed, right, uh, Giuseppe? Does, does it yeah, really? Yeah, it yeah, right. Blink. yeah, yeah. Right. Cool. But in this moment, you can start the, um, the mm -hmm. testing with connect to the USB-C and uh, start Blink. Start Blink, nice. It's like watching the fireplace. <laughs> it is. There we go. Get all of the legs off. All right. Let's see. Yeah, cool. So yeah, so the rest of the components, which um, we don't need to solder at this point. So we basically have the, um, the main, yeah, main power jack. And then if you want to power it from a higher voltage from USB, then it will go through this, um, this uh, power converter and that will provide the five volts for uh, the processor to use. But otherwise, mm -hmm. if you power, if you just hook it, hook it up through USB, the USB will provide the five volts. And yeah. then um, we have the two connectors for the shield there, and then um, the ICSP header for you know, like actually reprogramming the bootloader or doing stuff like that with the oh, sure, sure. chip. The SPI connector, correct? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and SPI, that's true. Ah, uh, why the polyester caps? Uh, Devin has not seen those before. Was it cost or were aesthetics part of the decision? Because he says that they look kind of neat. <laughs> okay, from my opinion, insert the, the microcontroller in, in, in the socket. Yes. Um, do, do, you have a, do you have anything... Uh, Anything to tell Devin about that? Why why polyester caps and not I don't know electrolytics or ceramics for for these ones? No, oh, this for the filter the, the the capacitor using only polyester. The the capacitor electronic using the the small and the cap for continuous volt. Uh, so so it was. Um, I, I think you said, you, if I remember correctly, you said that the polyester ones were, there are 100 microfarads? Yeah. So, 100, yeah. 100 nanofarads. Oh, nanofarads. OK. So, nanofarads. so zero, zero 1 farad. Got it. What, zero 1 microfarad. Got it. So, um, yeah. So, uh, I guess, why not use, why not use ceramic ones like, like that? No, this for the, the, the yellow is a, is a ceramic uh, capacitor mm -hmm. using for the cut oscillator for mm -hmm. 106 megahertz. Yeah, but why not use the only certification for this uh, capacitor? Eh? Interesting. Okay. So, um, so the, so these guys kind of had to be ceramic and was, is it just, uh, is the style of capacitor like less expensive than a ceramic or? Or was it just the capacitance? Oh, they won't leak dialect. Oh, no, no, no. This is not big difference, but just ceramic is a, is a small capacitor and okay. polyester for height voltage and height value. Okay. Yeah. Just a com combo of the of the voltage and the value and availability. All right. So um, so this, this is, is a very important position. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to even maybe get a little bit better of an angle on that. So um, you can see, especially when it's in the light like that, that there is a little notch right there, a little U shape. And there's also a little dot. And that dot means pin one is underneath it. And you want to put that in the same on the same end as the small notch in our carrier, which was also lined up with the little U on our silk screen. 
So yeah, this is an important bit to get correct. And let's see, sometimes also, and um, yeah, it looks like we might want to do this on this one. Um, so you can see that ICs naturally come with their legs like a little bit um, over 90 degrees. They're like a little bit spread out like that. And um, when they go into the carrier, they kind of want to be more 90 degrees. Like it would be difficult for me to just fit it into the carrier as it is right now. You can see like these legs kind of want to be outside of it. Um, so what I typically do, let's see if I can do it. On I propose the position board in, in the table and not in the, in the support metallic for the push. For, okay. Oh, for the push. In the... Yeah, something I do to make it kind of easier is I just I um, bend the leg. This beam is, is a correct mechanical. Eh? Yeah. So I like to bend the legs just a little bit um, using the table and. You can see it's just ever so slightly now that now they're a little bit straighter and easy to Perfect. put into the thing. <laughs> Is, you would not recommend that, <laughs> or or yes, you would. I I always do this with with ICs pretty much. It just makes it. I feel like it makes it a little bit easier to push in, and that you're less likely to get one that accidentally comes out and like splays out. Um, that always makes me makes me nervous. So. <laughs> uh, and then I want to line them all up. Deve poggiare la PCB sul tavolo. And a little bit of patience for this step is good because you know you want to make you don't want to um, force anything too much, and I can feel like. Something is getting a little stuck right there. There we go. And you can just kind of push. Whoop. Yeah, probably using the table as a surface, you can get the right pressure. Yeah. OK, we'll try that. So, yeah, remove in uh, factory. Yeah, it's, it's more just like a little bit of um, alignment. That is the tricky part right now. I'm going to do that side first because it's easier for me to see let's see they're just like a little bit still like a little bit wide here i'm just gonna i feel like let's see I got it <laughs> I'm just looking here that one's a little I've just, I've had this. Have, have the push, no problem. What's that? You can, you can plug it. Plug with. it. Yeah. It's a little hard for me right now, just like trying to keep this in the camera and also see it well myself at the same time. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Usually I would be, oh, I can see that that one's like a little bit bent in. Hang on. There we go. There we go. Push. Yeah, no, I can feel that one is not. There we go. Nice. Yeah, I could feel that one was not like aligned yeah, yeah. quite right. And so I didn't want to just push because it would have like gone gone in or out so there we go just like a little bit of patience for that step is good so there we go cool Woohoo! awesome um so okay we can so then we should be able to put the resistor and uh the led in there and make it blink so we'll just do that real quick. I really, I really want to see it blink, and then I'll, I'll let you all go. Thank you so much for being patient. <laughs> yeah, usually, 
let's say the the product and the experience is designed to uh, make you be become a maker in less than one hour. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm aware of the fact that we have been talking a lot in this session. Yeah. It's good. We are happy. But <laughs> it's for the people that oh, are willing to, to buy the, the kits. The experience is designed to last around one hour. One hour. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think totally if, if I had not been, been chatting a lot then, oh, yeah. uh, and if I had, you know, had the, those 3D instructions right next to me too, then definitely. Yeah, definitely the, the 3D hour. instructions are really, let's say, narrowing down the, the steps in the experience. Yeah, totally. Totally. All right. <laughs> I like the little bugs on the back of this. That's really cute. <laughs> I hope I put the I'm pretty sure I put the LED in properly. <laughs> now now I'm uh now I'm doubting myself, but I think <laughs> so I now finger crossed. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to break this out right now. And um, you, can, you can do it with your finger or you can use um, some pliers to do that mm -hmm. step too. And then I'm just going to hook that there. That one in there. Cool. Um, are our makerspaces using these for classes and and workshops and stuff? Yeah, we got uh, yeah several uh, uh, reports uh, and, and requests from yeah from Fab Labs makerspaces, but also from schools that are including this in the in their class. Uh, Nice. Uh, yeah, lessons, because nice. because no, normally they, I mean, uh, they are very focused on learning the basics of, of programming, uh, what the sensors do, and so on. But but actually, they 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 tend to skip uh, this very important step, which is learning how to solder with, <laughs> yeah. with the right time, with the right patience. It, it, it's always either given for granted, or or. You know, or too difficult uh, with, without uh, a guided experience. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I definitely it, it it definitely is nicer to have have a guided experience when learning how to solder for sure. Okay, I think I'm going to. I uh, don't want to accidentally short anything out with this vice, so I'm going to keep it on the table, <laughs> and I'm going to clear off a little little spot from all of our all of our little ends and stuff. Okay. Um, all right, black and red. And then um, we should just be able to poke it in once we hook it up to USB. Can yeah. I find a USB-C is another uh, question here. I might have... Oh, no, that's a B. Could you grab a USB-C for us, Robin? Thank you so much. <coughs> Robin's just going to grab a USB-C cable. And um, OK, so I believe, let's see. I do actually have a tab up with the, um, with the instructions. <laughs> but uh, so cool. Oh, thank you so much. Finger crossed. Yeah. <laughs> Drum roll. <laughs> so I know, right? Is, is something going to explode? Did I do it correctly? We shall see. All right. So that, that's the Easter egg. <laughs> first, I'm just going to hook up the USB power. Whoop. Yay. Yay! We got some LED. And the bling. <laughs> so it's just hooked up to USB power. It's not actually like uh, hooked up to data right now. 
Um, but I should be able to poke this one into a ground. And I think it's usually pin 13 that is the LED pin. No, for, the, for this experience, oh. you upload the sketch with the in documentation or um, link for all pin. Oh, blink for all pins. Okay. In this moment, you yes. only only blink for internal. Got it. Got it. So it's not. Um, so it's open not the, the, the sketch Arduino and uh, uh, upload the, the, the firmware. I think we can do that real quick, hopefully. Let's see. I really want to see it blink. <laughs> all right. And I do have. Arduino up here. I can share my screen. <laughs> some little, <laughs> little parties for seeing some LEDs blink. Yay. Um, there. Oh, that's a, yeah, well, that's, that's fine. The uh, default up right now whoop, that, um, that I had up was our uh, Krampus. We made a uh, Christmas e Krampus that we used a custom at tiny four core for, and that was a pretty fun, fun project. And we have the all the code up online and and instructions on how to like program it with Arduino and stuff like that. So uh, at least some level code there. Yeah. <laughs> Um, let's see, is it already in examples or do I need to actually uh, load it? I also haven't updated the IDE in a little bit, so. No, it's it's not in the not examples. In okay. the no, not in the example, it's in the, on, in the page. Um... After all the 3D models at the last step. Step okay. by step, yeah. Let me do, let me do this okay and um, there cool um let's see so testing the uno upload the pin test sketch oh nice you know what i cool yeah so got it i'll just copy Copy that, and new sketch. And let's see, is that already? I just want to look. Okay. So what that it does is to loop through all the pins and turn them on and off, uh, blinking, uh, blinking basically all the pins. Yep, this is the the toggle. Yeah, <laughs> right yeah. there. So yeah. when you yeah when you set your current pin to not your current pin, that just <clears throat> toggles between zeros and ones. Cool. So I will. Do... That and then just let me show this one. So I just copied it into there. Um, I need to make sure that my board isn't Uno. And let's see, did it? Sure, I'm all, all my wires here are good. Let's see. I believe, I think, okay, there we go. And all right, uh, let's see, let's try to upload the sketch and see what happens. <laughs> Dude, dude, dude. I have the I have the verbose <laughs> verbose uh, stuff on. So all right, it says upload. Yes. So now any of the pins should like all pins. All pins. Yeah. Oh wait, 
hang on, look, I'm going to make myself big again. <laughs> Let me stop sharing real quick. Doot, 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 doot. Okay. We, go. <laughs> we did it. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> so guys, we need to run. <laughs> We, are, we, need, we need to run because we are closing the office. Absolutely. Thank you so much for hanging in there. And uh, I in the office, but not. <laughs> yeah, almost sleeping in the office, but <laughs> I prefer to sleep in home. So, thank you for having us. Yes, thank you for staying late and for doing us. This was great. And uh, everybody stay tuned for coupon code. And yeah, thank you so much. And thank you, Alessandro. Thank you. It's been awesome. Vale. Cool. Vale. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>